Welcome to Justice Matters. I am Denise George, Attorney General of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Justice Matters is a program aimed to inform, engage, and empower you with knowledge of Virgin Islands laws and legal issues that affect our everyday lives and our community, including insightful discussions with special guests so you can be empowered with knowledge in order to make a difference. Today's topic is fatherhood buzz. It's part two of the Department of Justice Paternity and Child Support Access and Visitation Program that sponsors free of charge programs to help build strong families, parent-child relationships, and increase both parents' quality time and involvement in their children's lives. Today, we focus on the part of the Access and Visitation Program that's about building fathers' relationships with their children. It's called the Fatherhood Buzz. We will talk with Carlton Stevens, who created and spearheads the Fatherhood Buzz Program, about what this program has done to inspire and support fathers' relationships with their children in our community that might surprise you. But first, let's just take a quick recap on our child support programs under the Virgin Islands and federal laws. Title 4D under the Federal Social Security Act of 1975 is the federal law that essentially requires every state to manage a child support enforcement program. To help fund these programs, the federal government provides money to each state and territory, including the Virgin Islands. The term 4D or 4D program simply refers to the federal law and the programs under it. Under Virgin Islands law, the Child Support 4D program is managed under the Virgin Islands Department of Justice Attorney General through the Division of Paternity and Child Support. It is responsible for the administration and operation of the Virgin Islands and the 4D programs under it. It is, for the most part, 66% federally funded, with 34% coming from local funds, and it's responsible for the administration and operation of the Virgin Islands and the Title D programs under the Child Support Division. The federal government agency that oversees the National Child Support Program is the administration of children and families through its Office of Child Support Enforcement, or it's called OCSC. The OCSC partners with state and territorial child support agencies, such as with the VI Department of Justice, Paternity and Child Support Division, with the goal to encourage parental responsibility so that children receive financial, emotional, and medical support from both parents, even when they live in separate households. The Access and Visitation Program we are spotlighting today is one of the special grant programs under Title 4D administered by the OSCE. Title 4D, Section 469B of the Social Security Act, says that the Administration for Children and Families shall make grants under this section to enable states to establish and administer programs to support and facilitate non-custodial parents' access to and visitation of their children by means of activities including mediation, both voluntary and mandatory, counseling, education, development of parenting plans, parenting plans rather, and visitation enforcement, including monitoring, supervision, and neutral drop-off and pickup locations, and development also of guidelines for visitation and alternative custody arrangements. The OCSC reports that nationally each year, about $10 million in mandatory grant funding goes to states and territories to operate the AV program, which is specifically geared towards parents' access to quality time with their children. As the law says, states and territories are permitted to use grant funds to develop programs and provide services such as the mediation, 
development of parenting plans, parent education, counseling, visitation, enforcement, and the pickup and drop off type processes for visitation. So services funded under the grant must support the intended program outcome. The program is not limited to parents in the child support program, but is available to parents and families in the community. Locally, this is accomplished through our Department of Justice, Paternity and Child Support Division Access and Visitation Program. From this program, the Fatherhood Buzz was born. It's available for all fathers in our community, whether single, married, custodial, or non-custodial. Studies after studies have shown that generally children with their fathers active in their lives do better socially, mentally, emotionally, and financially. Fathers do matter in a child's life. Joining us now is Mr. Carlton Stevens, the facilitator of the Mission Project, and he'll tell us more about Fatherhood Buzz. Mr. Stevens, welcome to Justice Matters. Um, I'm really glad to have you here because we want to talk about the Fatherhood Buzz Workshop um, that you've been doing. How long have you been doing that program? We've been conducting the Fatherhood Buzz Program for over four years now. And what is it? How would you describe what that program is? Um, the Fatherhood Bus Program is, 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 is a responsible fatherhood parenting educational support program that helps fathers um, reconnect with their children and families and equip them with the essential parenting skills through our classes and workshops. I mean, we, we provide a, a supportive environment where fathers can feel safe to share their concerns and, and to learn from one another. And is this open to all fathers? Current, currently, um, with the way it was, it was structured through um, the, the Department of Justice Access and Visitation Program, um, we were using the clients that they serve through their, whether their child support services or their uh, mediation services. So that's what we're currently working with, this population we're currently working with. We were talking about, talking with, in the previous program, talking with the um, administrator of our Department of Justice Access and Visitation Program, and where it is being advertised to, to be where other persons or all fathers um, in the Virgin Islands are welcome to participate. Um, so we're, we've expanded the program in that sense. But tell me, you said that it's been like um, over four years what are the workshops like? Tell me what happens. What, what kinds of things happen within these workshops? During the workshop, we provide the fathers with essential, essential skills um, to help them um, build their, their parenting toolkit, as you, what you want to say, uh, about being a father. We discuss many different topics. Uh, we talk about what it is, what it is to, um, to be a father. Uh, we talk about um, experiencing manhood because, you know, we know um, a, lot, a lot of fathers uh, father, grew up fatherless in, a, in our society. I mean, that, that's, that's a cancer that we see and that affects every community, whether stateside or local. And, and yep. we know the outcomes of, of children who, who are raised without fathers. So we, we, we talk about um, for being a provider as a father, what does it mean to be a successful father? What qualities would a father, what qualities of what a father of the year you think will have? Um, what does it mean to be a provider for your children? Um, we have fathers who are custodial fathers or non-custodial fathers. So we we discuss those kind the differences between you know between those um, how to develop values in your children, how to communicate with your children, how to communicate with the parent, the mother of that child, of, 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 your, of your child. Uh, we discuss topics like relationships, uh, dealing with behaviors, um, how to handle visitations when you, when you have you visit with your child, if, if you have visitation rights, and understanding and managing your, your conflicts and anger within yourself. So we, we try to take the we, we, the, the program basically covers a variety of issues and topics that, that you will find in relationships, whether it's with or without, without your, um, a partner. 
What is it that prompted you to create this program? 27 years of experience of working with children and families in St. Thomas. Um, I, I, I've had the opportunity to work um, with the Women's Resource Center, um, currently now the Family Resource Center, uh, in a program that they could, that I coordinated called the Men Terminating Violence Program, which was a domestic violence um, support group for men that was had deferred sentences after being charged with domestic violence. And I mean, the groups ran for 24 weeks, but after the group, we I saw there was a need for aftercare because you'll you'll see the, you'll, you'll meet these guys in the street, you'll meet them different places, and they always have a question or there's an issue or something that they're working on. And right. so, so it, it was an ongoing thing. So I said, you know, that's, that's a need. I mean, fathers really genuinely, once they, they, they get the information and they empower, empower with this information, they, they want to be a, a part of their child life or they want to be a part of the family. They want to find a way to make things work for them different than that, what they were doing before. So, um, out of that came came the mission. I mean, it's, it's, it's a unique nonprofit agency with 13 years of basically working with families and fathers who have been previously absent from the lives of their children uh, or who are currently um, trying to reconnect with their children. I mean, the programs we, we, we offer empower fathers to address their struggles um, and insecurities and, and building them the confidence to and care to participate in the lives of their children. Are they able to um, to con consult and converge together with respect to specific instances that they may be dealing with with their children? And that's that's key in, in, in what we do when we work with the men in the support group because it is a stigma that men don't go to counseling. They don't they don't do they don't sit and talk to no head shrink that as they as they call it. They tend to not do the bonding. You know, a lot of times women said they say women tend to like get together and share you know information and bond, but they usually say that men usually don't. Once the men get into the support group and the support group, after they say like the second or third week and they realize you're not trying to get into their head, you're not trying to, you know, do impose something on the, your will on them, and they feel comfortable to share. They realize that they have like issues, like concerns, and they can learn from one another from the information that we're sharing with them. And and you get to see them grow as as the as the as the time go 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 by during the sessions. Uh, it's 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 very important for for each. It's very important after sitting there and watching somebody coming who re, who wasn't receptive to the information, and after about the fourth or fifth week, they 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 talk. I mean, they say men don't talk in these groups, but they they talk. They talk mm -hmm. after the group. They don't want to go. They sit. They have questions. They ask. They talk because and you always hear the echo. Where was this when I was growing up? Where was this before I had my child? Where was this before I got married? Where was this? You know. I wish somebody had told me some of these things before. How long are the workshops um, when you do these programs? The, the workshops are usually 12 week programs um, designed to help the participants look at themselves and as men and as fathers um, to develop the skills and the skills necessary to be good parents. And so it's, it's a 12 week workshop and it's all, this is, this is a curriculum um, we use that evidence-based um, to the fatherhood initiative um, that all uh, it's, it's actually organization that runs a lot of the when it comes to activities and information for fathers so it's a 12-week program that, that they go through and have you seen or heard of results uh, with respect to how when these fathers, I know you talk about the transformation of, of a lot of fathers when they go into the program and they come out of the program, but, but about their relationships with their kids and the difference in their children. We do an aftercare for, for the men in the group. We just don't end and we, we keep an open chat. We develop a chat group, group during the, when we start the, the program and that chat group stays open. Uh, I, I never, I don't close. I just keep adding names to it. Um, so we, we, if they have a concern, we'll reach out to them um, and, and help them with whatever issues that they're facing. 
or they need help, they need help, they might need help with. Um, we have had um, participants who who had child support issues and, and, and we, we let them know you need to work with your caseworker who have employment issues. So we try to help them enroll in a training program um, or to labor, help them to, to, to the process. Because it, it, for several reasons, a lot of times men don't like pro process. We, they don't like to actually wait and actually go to the process. And we find that that's, that's to their detriment. Um, they'll, they'll need a job, but they won't go to labor because they feel that the, the person at labor, the, at labor is not going to give them the time and the service they need, you know? Right. So, so they, they're, they're reluctant to go in. So we try to help them to that process. Um, how to, I had a gentleman who wanted to change the name of, of one of his, one of his child, his children. So he didn't know exactly what he needed to do. We walk him to the process, you know, this is who you need to call. This is what you need to do. So in essence, you give, you're there to, continue to give support to these um, the men who are in the program then. Right, definitely, definitely. And so you, you indicated you get the, the program participants come through the access and visitation program, right? Um, right? And so what is the extent of your coordination throughout the workshop with the access and visitation program at Department of Justice? Well, once they give us the names of the participants, um, I, I usually meet with them individually um, so we can under, get a feel as to why they're into in the program, um, how we can further help them um, after the program or during the program, what issues they might be facing that might need help with. Um, and I, I need to let you know too, part of the program, we, we, when, the, when the men come into the program and they come every, and we meet twice, every once a week. Mm -hmm. And so when we meet, um, they're greeted with at the door. Um, they're greeted with a light snack or dinner, you could say, uh, after they come in straight from work. Um, if you have to childcare duties, or you have to pick up your child from daycare or the school before you come, you can bring your child with you. I have a I have a wonderful um, child child worker that that works with the children. Um, so, so they can come to get something to eat. They can take the, the, the child, drop them off to the child care worker and come to the group. So oh. I mean, it, it's very it's structured so they can have time to sit and work on their, their personal issues uh, for that period of, period of time. And if they have homework, they do their homework. Um, they get a snack. Uh, you know, if they want to lay and sleep. There's a cat they can lay and sleep until, and, you know, until, until it's over. At the end of the program, you receive a certificate of completion. I, we, we got some really uh, good feedback from a few people. I just want to, um, we're going to segue a bit to, to at least one father who had a lot to say about what he got out of the, the program. My experience has uh, been really good, you know, engaging with the other men, other fathers, and sharing different experiences uh, along our journey. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it really kind of helped to uh, make better decisions as a father and look at things in a different perspective. So yeah, it's a great program. And I, I highly enjoy it. I recommend it to any fathers out there to engage, especially with your children. But it's a great program to be a part of. So what do you see now as the present and future of the program? Any any changes or anything, or just you gonna just keep on going in the right direction? What do you see? For for the, the program, I mean we, we have we we have actually added an, another aspect of the program. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we piloted recently um, the women's version of, of the fatherhood bus um, yeah. called Mothers Matter. Mothers Matters, yes, we talked about that. Great. Tell me, tell me a bit about that. That's actually um, facilitated by Ms. Ruth Warren, um, wonderful facilitator. She does a wonderful job with the ladies. I, I, I don't get a chance, I don't get an opportunity to sit in with, with in those groups because it's just, just for the females. But um, the mothers, the mothers matters is a is, is a program that addresses um, um, the the factors that affect fathers' involvement in the lives of their children, um, and how the, the the mothers can play a role in in not being the gatekeeper, but more so being a support for the father who is trying to reach out. And, and create that relationship with that child. 
So it's, it's trying to, we, we actually mirror some of the same, the same topics that the, the men discuss, but the, from the women's point of, point of view. That's great because we actually got to hear from some of the mothers from the recent Mothers Matters graduation a few months ago. I took that step or that initiative and I, I came, I uh, received a lot, I understood um, the changes that I can make for myself and for the family uh, dynamic uh, as a whole. And, um, I feel like we'll put this practice as it's, it's only to better the situation. And, um, uh, and again, a lot. Mm-hmm. I get five wonderful ladies. Mm-hmm. And Miss Warren. She was like a mother. There's a lot of miseducation that men have about their role and responsibility in relationships. And so the women attempt. But there's not a lot of places around here that men can go, sit down, talk about issues with another man, and he can be your home. What we talk about, I mean, the curriculum is one thing, but we incorporate other things into our curriculum that opens your eyes. About, I know my daughter did some exercises with you guys, did some of the exercises that we do with them, with the colors and what animals, and so many different things that we do to help you understand that where you are right now, is not where you can be tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You could be somewhere else. So I mean, I'm really, really, really glad that y'all came and stuck it out. And I would like you to come back again. The studies tell you a child that grew up in a home with a father that's engaged is better. They do better in school, they're emotionally better. They grow up. They get a job and they can hold that job. They can get a relationship and keep that relationship because they learn from parents who understand what it is to raise a child together. Whether you're in the house or not, one common goal. One goal, that child. So our, 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 our mission is to just re-engage fathers and mothers to help them become a better version of themselves when it comes to parenting. In order for those little ones to grow strong and develop into strong human beings with their own self-purpose, they need both parents. That is why we chose to do this. This is not a one day thing for people. No, this one. That's what I chose. This is a passion. And then with the merging the Mothers Matters, um, with that, as you said, you expanded the program to include that. It brings the mothers in and what you talked about, the both parents and having that kind of, um, you know, um, enhancement and power um, uh, for the children, right? And um, how long has the Mothers Program, you just starting that? Yes, we just piloted that last year for the first time. And in fact, I know that just recently there was a a, um, a, a graduation or for the from the Mothers Matters program. As well. Yes, we just started that last year for the first time, and it was it was very well. It was done, and we do the same aftercare with the with with the mothers, um, follow up with the mothers after the program to see how they're doing and see how how things are progressing with with the, the issues that they're they're facing. Because we we try to let them understand that children need both parents. Mm-hmm. They need both parents to be successful. I mean, they need both parents to help them grow. I mean, I mean, they, they, there's always a, we, we have a, a, a really, really, really um, issue with people, some folks understand that fathers play a critical role in the, the development and the growth of children. I mean, it's, fathers are the missing piece of, and a significant, they have a significant impact on, on children's life and, and, if, if some parents see their job as just being a money machine or a, discipline, a disciplinarian, it, it sends a, a wrong, the wrong message to children. Okay, is this, um, are the workshops available in St. Croix as well? Or right now, is it only St. Thomas? Currently just in St. Thomas. I would love to see if I can 
expand to St. Croix. Yes, and I believe that we will be making plans to expand a, a, a program where they can be conducted in St. Croix as well through the Access of Visitation Program of um, the Department of Justice. So that's that would really be great. I want you to I want you to say in 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 closing, what do you think is the um, most important thing that you would like to say to the community and to fathers in the community with respect to this program and um, and the value of this program to them if they're interested in participating um, or just so that the, the, the community could be aware of, of what is going on in this value. First, let me let me thank the, the Department of Justice and the, um, the, the, the Access and Visitation Program for having the, the foresight to actually institute this program within within some of the programs that they run at, at, at that department. Um, it, it's, it's a needed, much needed program to, throughout this, this community. Now, as we know in close, I mean, I mean father absences is, is, is a cancer that affects every aspect of our community, community's health, um, and causes poor outcomes for children in the areas of education attainment, mental health, relationships, stability and, and employment success further on in life. I mean, research has shown that fatherlessness is, is a growing program in, in the US as well as in our territory. And the research is there that shows that father absence, um, childhood can sig significantly impact a, ch a child's perception of life as well as uh, their choices later on in life. And um, what we're doing here, I mean, is a step in the right direction. You know, that's, I can't say, I can't really say enough and uh, in applauding the access and visitation program um, from the Department of Justice for their foresight for creating this responsible fatherhood program that will support and empower the fathers um, to having the capacity, capacity to, to leave a powerful legacy for their children in generations to come. Excellent. Very well said. Very well said. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Stevens, uh, for joining us on Justice Matters. Thank you so much for having me. And spe especially for the work that you're doing. We do appreciate you. We do appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Remember the numbers to call if you're a grantee that's, um, a, or you would like to be a grantee um, in this program and provide services, as well as whether or not you'd like to be a participant in the program and receive these benefits. The numbers to call are for St. Thomas, 340-775-3070. And that is also, there's an email address, email at viaccess at vi.gov. St. Croix, the number is 340-778-5958. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Justice Matters.